people. So uh, supposedly they say a mobster named Mosca was killed in the California Department of Corrections. Well, just so you people know, I don't know if that's the truth or what the deal is uh, with uh, all the mobster uh, say so that uh, is going around uh, in regards to Mosca. But I will tell you guys this I know Mosca personally. Um, when I was an active gang member, I was doing things for my homeboy, Huero Martin. He is rest in peace, and so is Mosca. That's the only reason why I'm talking. Uh, on these two individuals because either if you're not here to defend yourself I will not bring up your name that's just the way that I operate always have and always will if you're not here to defend yourself once again your name will not come out of my mouth being that they're both rest in peace I will uh, say a couple of things in regards to uh, Mosca's death so Wero is Mosca Selly up in Pelican Bay they were related somehow. Uh, the homeboy Guero said uh, Mosca was his primo, which means cousin. So um, he used to ask me, Martin Guero, being that he was a selling in Pelican Bay, he didn't want his name on the money orders. He was asking me to send money orders to different uh, individuals that are supposed to, you know, uh, in Mosca's uh, category. See, so. Uh, I said, sure, why not, you know? I, was, I didn't have any type of gang affiliation, uh, any prison gangs or anything, so why not, you know? I, I went ahead and sent the money orders a few times, and a month later I did the same, and uh, I guess Mosca remembered my name, Armando Zambrano, which I wrote on the money orders, and on the, uh, you know, the letters that we were sending him. Uh, his cousin would say, hey, what's up, uh, primo? everything good here goes a little bit of pocket change for some uh, coffee and what have you uh, some popcorn change and we would send the money orders so <clears throat> years later <clears throat> when I became a type 1 wildland firefighter with the United States Department of Agriculture Forest Service I got hired uh, by the Verde White Hotshot Crew uh, the Angeles National Forest Los Angeles River Ranger District Santa Clarita California was in my fire barracks that I was assigned to the Verde White Ranger Station fire barracks. So when I became a federal employee, my superintendent, Mike Arred, said, look, Mondo, you can't bring that gang stuff up here to the forest, uh, up here to the Angeles National Forest, uh, because uh, we won't tolerate it. You got to leave all that behind you if you're going to be a federal firefighter. So I gave them my word that I would never bring my homeboys up to the barbecues that we have, you know, can we at the station? And uh, I did so, and uh, I never return back to my old way of life, which is, uh, you know, gang life, uh, East Side Bongero gang life, uh, harbor area. I never went back to that way of life. Years later, I end up going to the Los Angeles County Jail. Uh, after, um, you know, the Forest Service let me go and what have you, I got myself in trouble and I ended up catching a new uh, dope case and I was in the LA County Jail. And uh, mind you, uh, Moscow was there. He was running the show, uh, the LA County Jail, uh, when I got there. And uh, they put me on a active gang member role because I wasn't trying to, you know, uh, uh, say that I'm, um, you know, uh, tell the guards that, you know, uh, uh, I'm done, I hang up, I'm, you know, I'm hanging up the gloves and I'm scared and I can't be on that, uh, you know, uh, high power module role with these killers and gangsters. So I just didn't say nothing and they put me on the tier. So what happened is one of the youngsters there got disrespected by one of the cops, one of the guards, one of the uh, LA County Sheriffs. So we were told that uh, the guy running the tier uh, told all of us not to give back our trays that we were going to sell extract. So um, they tried to tell me to stay out of it, you know, uh, just to, uh, you know, stay out of it and what have you. And I'm like, nah, man, if you guys are going to ride, I'm going to ride with you, uh, kids. And, I know that's probably not the right decision to make, but you know what? I ain't been uh, staying out of shit, so let's do this. And we ended up cell extracting with the goon squad, the, uh, the riot gear and all that, you know, getting tased and shot with the mace, uh, paintball gun that has mace in the middle of the paintball. A uh, big birth of the 37 millimeter block gun. Uh, Taser hooks. I had taser hooks sticking out of my forehead and out of my temple. They tased me in the face. 
and I had taser hooks in my chest too, two of them. They had to take me to outside hospital. Uh, they broke on my bones with the billy clubs. Uh, they shot me with, uh, they threw the grenade in my cell, and I exploded, the little BB went everywhere. They shot me with the 37 millimeter of the block gun, the paintball gun, the automatic uh, uh, paintball gun that shoots uh, uh, as fast as you can pull the trigger and the paintballs have mace inside. Um, they mace me with the, we call it the fire extinguisher, the big mace um, canister. I still didn't give up the tray. Uh, and then they, uh, like, you know, they took turns, uh, uh, each one putting something up on my bars, whether it be a, the tasers or, uh, I mean, the, um, the Big Bertha, the 37 millimeter, or the, uh, when they threw the grenade, and, and I still didn't give up my tray. And then they shot me with the paintball gun, with the mace, I still didn't give up my tray. Uh, then they um, uh, threw the, um, uh, the tear gas in my cell, the uh, tear gas bomb. I still didn't give up my tray. Uh, then uh, after the 37 millimeter, the paintball gun, and all the other BS that they throw at you, uh, I still didn't give up my tray. So they ran in my cell. Um, I tried to snatch the shield away. That didn't do, go too good because the guard was like six foot five, six foot six. He was huge, 300 something pounds. He slammed me onto the ground. They hit me with the belly clubs, the steel toe boots. They broke all my facial bones, my nose, my jaw. My mouth was all busted up. My both eyes were swole shut. Uh, they did a number on me. So, uh, you know, I, I went down swinging though. And uh, I ended up, uh, they made an example out of me. I had all the youngsters out on the tier, on the uh, hallway floor sitting on their butts with their hands handcuffed behind their back facing me so that when they brought me out carrying me one arm here one arm uh one deputy had one leg another deputy had another leg another deputy had another arm and all four of them walked me past everybody dripping blood from the nose the mouth my ear was uh, drum was busted uh, they made an example they did all the youngsters they said see what happens when you when you an og and you call the shot they thought i called the shot when in reality i was trying to put a stop to it I was like well your homeboy was uncuffed homie uh, and I'm not going to mention his name because you know like I said if you're not here to defend yourself but I said your homie uh, so and so didn't have handcuffs on his homie they were both from Pomona 12th street and uh, I said your homie from Pomona didn't have any uh, handcuffs on how come he didn't fight his own battle why do we got to fight his battle and still his homeboy uh, uh, said uh, no we're going to all sell extract so I said fuck it let's do this you know but in actuality, I was trying to put a stop to all of it, but it didn't go down that way. And like I said, I rolled with the homies. And uh, I guess most got caught wind of all that. So instead of putting a hit on me, uh, because I was no longer with the gangster business, instead I saw him going out to court. Most got sat here, I sat here, and Tonito from Wilmas, he's, uh, you know, he's also rest in peace, so I'll bring his name up. Uh, was behind us against the wall and we started chopping it up the three of us you know uh, Tonito remembered me he's like hey Mongo how you been and blah 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 this and that and I'm like alright Tony how you been and long time no see Mosca was asking me about where or how he was doing he's like fine got to meet you Mongo I remember the money orders and what have you uh, back in the day appreciate all that and uh, he could have had my head on a ladder if he wanted to but he didn't and I ended up uh, staying there another four months fighting my case on that same row after I got out of the hole, the high power hole, after I got out of the hospital and all that uh, for all the broken bones in my face. I don't know if that's what uh, got me uh, a little say-so in the matter because I cell extracted with the homies and I showed I wasn't scared to um, fight against the badge. Uh, at the time, so, uh, you know, I know that wasn't the right decision for me to make me that I'm my first responder myself, but, you know, shit happens when you're in the jailhouse, kids, and, uh, you know, it's nothing nice, and whoever chooses to walk that walk and talk that talk is putting his life on the line at all times, so people are saying Mosca's a ruthless killer, that he uh, had people sent to their grave, all these people on different internet channels are saying he's a ruthless bloodthirsty killer and cutthroat that he sent a lot of kids to their graves and uh, a lot of moms uh, grieved for their sons that he had uh, killed which to me is a bunch of baloney because I didn't know that part of uh, 
that side of Mosca. Uh, I'm not saying that that's not what took place, but I know one thing that if you're pushing that line and you're a gangster, if Mosca had them hit, it's because they had it coming. You know, uh, and nobody told them it would be easy when they became a gangster. So, uh, once again, I'm coming to his defense and I'm saying if Mosca ever did have, once again, anybody whacked, it's because they had it coming. He didn't just have any, you know, Boy Scout killed or like they're making him out to be or, you know, some kid that didn't have it coming. Once again, when you get jumped into a hood, you know what uh, the consequences are to that way of life. So, uh, once again, kids, you know, uh, I don't uh, say uh, uh, that gang life is uh, cool or that it's the way to go. No, uh, if, if you know you were my son, I would tell you, or my daughter, no, stay out of that because there's no uh, future in that way of life. And, and you know, uh, death and destruction is all that way of life has to offer. And I did it for many years. I was in my 30s when I chose to uh, leave that way of life. I was 12 when I got jumped in, 11 actually, when I got jumped into Bongo. So I did many years into my 30s pushing that hardcore gangster line. And yes, I did do favors for them, you know, uh, uh, and uh, I was, uh, you know, uh, well liked by them. I was a camarada, comrade, and, uh, you know, uh, I did, uh, you know, at one time pushed that line real tough, but. Uh, I was never anybody special, but I was a camarada, and I happened to be Mosca's camarada. And, uh, you know, all these people, once again, are uh, throwing him up under the bus, saying that he had it coming, uh, that uh, he got whacked and killed in prison, that he had it coming. Nobody has that coming. Unless you mess up and, you know, it's your time to go, then it's your time to go. When it's your number is called, you're, you're going to go. That's just the way God has it planned, you know. It's all in the book of life and up in heaven that you know, it's your time to go, it's your time to go. That's just the bottom line, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, they're saying that uh, people on the internet are making them out to be a cutthroat, bloodthirsty individual. And the side of Mosca that I knew, he was nothing like that. Like I said, he could have had my head on a silver platter uh, because I was already uh, done with that gangster way of life. And once you become a gangster, there's no turning back, you know. You have to push that line until death. So, once again, he could have had me killed, and he didn't. I walked out into that county jail, and I walked out that county jail uh, when I got the chain to state prison. So, uh, once again, I'm not saying he's an angel or anything like that, but he was a good man, and he had a good heart, and he showed me some compassion uh, by uh, letting me uh, go through that L.A. County jail without anybody uh, touching me. Yes, I did have a little run-in with one of my homies, but that was a personal uh, long -ball business. And it was between Ron and Yellow, uh, uh, and you know, uh, he, he cut my arm. Uh, I care, you know, nothing spectacular, nothing you know, to where my life was on the line or anything. But I had words with them, and uh, he ended up cutting me from behind the bars. I'm not gonna say his name, but in the back here in Yellow. So, you know, uh, that had nothing to do with Mosca. Like I said, that was an ghetto business that uh, took place that day, you know, that happened to me. And uh, I couldn't do nothing to him because he's behind the bars, you know. So I said, well, you cut me from behind the bars. That ain't about nothing. You know, why don't you do it when you're, when you're going to rule for something? And I could have defended myself, you know, like, you know, you weren't behind the bars. But anyway, that's another story. But, um, yeah, Mosca let me uh, walk in and walk out of that L.A. County jail in one piece. So I owe him that much, you know. Uh, uh, once again, uh, whoever that individual, uh, you know, uh, sent to their grave, it's because they had it coming to me that he wasn't the type of individual just to say, well, that guy, I don't like the way he looks, kill him. Or I don't like the way he, he, uh, he, he talks or... Uh, I don't like the way he acts or whatever the case may be, kill him. No, I mean, he was not that kind of person. Uh, once again, uh, when you sign up to be a gangster, you know the consequences. You're, you're very much aware of uh, that way of life and what, uh, you know, what one has come when you're pushing that line. And that's, once again, death and destruction. Nothing more, nothing less. Only thing you got to look, to look forward to with that way of life, kids, is death or prison, life in prison.
But look what, what uh, happened in Moscow. He was doing life in prison, and he ended up you know, getting killed in prison. So that just goes to show, you know, that can happen to anybody. The best of the best can end up getting whacked in, in prison.